Finding Me uh, came about by, um, well, initially by an approach from the Lowry, um, uh, who had a, uh, a gap in their exhibition uh, program. We looked at the website and we thought, how can we make what's successful about the website into an exhibition space? How can we put that into an exhibition space? And after much thought and meetings and emails and phone calls, the idea came for, um, well, music defines people. The people, a lot of the users on our website are defined by their life in music, whether that's as a fan or a musician or a photographer. So either someone in the music industry or simply someone that enjoys music. And so that's how, uh, that's where it started really. And it was um, a case of them putting an email out to all our members and I think in the end one of the um, really successful parts of defining me was definitely the uh, wide range of um, the subjects. They managed to get across the breadth of music in, uh, in, in Manchester and, uh, and how important it is to people. Whilst the exhibition was running uh, the idea was always to have a series of events um, running alongside. So there were um, a couple of discussions. We had um, Barry Adamson, who was the uh, who was in magazine, and he's in Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, um, and he's done a few, a couple of sort of very Manchester-based albums. One being Moss Side Stories. Uh, he did a discussion with Dave Haslam, as did Richard Boone, who was uh, set up what is now seen as the first independent punk label, um, New Hormones. And we also had uh, an event at the um, Manchester Literary Festival. Michael Barnes Winters, uh, otherwise known as Barney Doodlebug, uh, held, his own, held an event in the gallery where he sort of talked about his history in Manchester, um, very important history in Manchester. Um, uh, and we also had a couple of guided tours around the event. We had a scanning day where people were invited to bring in their objects. Um, which was very successful and dug up some extremely interesting collections. We've always worked on the basis that the most interesting collections are the ones, you know, in people's attics, under people's beds. And I think the scanning event was uh, very successful in sort of, um, uh, sort of showing that we were right, really. Um, which is what the archive is about, you know, dig out reach under your bed, get that shoebox out and stick your tickets up and tell us your stories. So my name's Abigail and I'm the project manager for MDM Archive and I'm the regional programme manager for Drake Music. At the Archive we celebrate Greater Manchester music um, through our digital archive and also our community outreach work. Um, and we, we, we come at that from a heritage perspective. Um, whereas with Drake Music, um, we work a lot with people who face barriers, um, such as disabled people. I think one of the great things about the community project was the work that we did um, with the Prospectors and Graham Massey. Hi, I'm Graham Massey. I've been in bands in Manchester since the 70s, uh, such bands as Biting Tongues, 808 Steak, uh, Tool Shared Home Life. So, so I'm here working uh, with the guys from Drake Music, uh, and it's a collaboration between the, the Manchester District Music Archive, of which I've been a contributor since the beginning and uh, I've been involved in the Lowry exhibition um, Defining Me. As a spin-off of that uh, it, there was a connection to work with the Prospectors. The Prospectors are um, a band of disabled musicians from Stockport and we got them together with Graham um, and so it was really interesting to try and bring all of these different um, aspects together both celebrating Graham's life in Manchester music and also um, looking at the assistive music technologies that that band use and seeing how Graham could sort of augment that in some way with his own knowledge. 
So, so we've been working with what they call assisted technologies using sort of uh, different controllers to enable people to participate in music. Uh, it's, it's more like a band of using iPads, th things called sound beams and a MIDI creator uh, and switches as well which are things that I've got from a PlayStation quiz game. We can give people with often very limited movement a chance to participate in music in quite a meaningful way. Hello, I'm Yaz. Uh, I've been coming up uh, Drake since 2009. Working with Graham Mass has been very, very good, actually. It's been a learning curve for me. And I'll things like that. This project that we're just doing now with Graham has given us opportunity to be a little bit more experimental with the equipment, find out things again, a bit more time to work. I'm bringing in my experience in um, sort of textural stuff, MIDI technology, uh, use of synthesizers, and the whole theme that we're, of the concert is space rock. It's um, been very good for it's very wide ranging. Learnt new songs, learnt new everything. Yeah, a bit different to what we normally use. Probably slightly, slightly heavier and kind of the hawk wind and the gong tracks, in particularly. People here already knew Voodoo Ray. That's quite well known, obviously, as a Manchester dance track. But it is a bit, a, a bit fuller kind of rock sound than we, we normally create. Although there's a lot of spacey techno stuff going on around it as well. It's great with, with Graham's involvement. Uh, it's great to see not only the members thinking outside the box, but us as uh, you know, the, as musicians thinking outside the box as well. And I've never really uh, listened to the output of something like Gong before. Or uh, even Hawkwind, like, you know, they say Hawkwind, I really only know them for one particular track, so it's interesting. You know, the performance itself was a fantastic experience um, for the prospectors. Um, they had done gigs before, but this was particularly well attended and um, it was just exciting in terms of the new arrangements and the, the new bits of kit that were being used. I think about 120 people attended the gig, which is also great for the um, Manchester College students who were engineering it um, as part of their college work. Um, it was a fantastic opportunity for them because they'd never worked with such a complex setup and it was actually the first time um, following a period of shadowing um, engineers that those students were sort of in the driving seat for the gig and it was really complex for a variety of reasons but it was a really important learning experience for them um, so that was another of the, the outcomes of that project. The second band at the community gig um, was Nice Touch and they're a band from Bolton and they have um, sprung out of um, the Change the Music project which is a fantastic um, inclusive music making project run by an organisation called Music Unlimited for people with SEND. So Nice Touch have only been playing together for a short time. I've been going down to their um, workshops and doing some evaluation with them. Um, in fact, I went a couple of days ago and all they were talking about was the gig, um, which I think was a real confidence builder for them. Um, and I actually managed to have a chat with Kev, who was the um, person who was using the Chaosilator. And we had a little bit of a problem, a technical problem with that at, at, um, during the gig, which was really challenging for both the engineers and for Kev. But it actually turned out to be a really good thing because um, everybody kept really calm and Kev was given the opportunity to do his solo again and he really came back and did a fantastic solo.
We also had a band made up of members of the Strummers and Grinners ukulele ensemble from Salford. And the vast majority of that collective, um, of whom I think there were 20 on the night, had never done a gig before. And I think there were a lot of nerves beforehand. But one of the nice things about it was that there was a great deal of support that they were offering to each other. Okay, folks, everyone organised. Uh, does yeah, anybody no. want anything else now? Uh, That's it. Right. David's still waiting for the list. I know, I'll give him one. I'm sure he did. Yeah, my name is Bernie. I play banjo, guitar, ukulele, a little bit of keyboards. Uh, I was fortunate to play with the Summerlongs, great bunch of guys at the band on the wall. I teach most of them, in fact I actually teach all of them, either guitar, banjo or uke. And with respect to them, I'm really, really proud of the fact that they started to play music late in life. That was it, but you, you actually got the other way around. Most of these people started after the age of 60 and all things like fingers can uh, go wrong, arthritic bits that uh, drive you mad, and yet they all play pretty well. All of the uh, Summerlongs, they hadn't played at all in front of an audience, and I think Ban on the Wall kindly gave us the chance to do that, and they all loved it. They were all buzzing after the show. Terrific. I found my love By the gasworks cross One particular member, David, I spoke to beforehand, um, was, was feeling really nervous and I think he gained massive personal confidence from the experience of going on stage because afterwards he was really buzzing and he just said he, you know, he couldn't wait to do it again. Um, and it's particularly sort of meaningful for a lot of um, the members of that collective at that age because they, they all remember that venue from you know, many years gone by. Uh, going there in the 60s and 70s um, and so it was it was a, a, a real thrill for them just to actually be on that stage on the The Oral Histories project um, had the aim of stimulating more oral histories uploads to the MDM archive website. Um, we had um, two open training days, um, one in Bury and one in Heem, um, that were attended by, I think it was about 30 people in total in the end, um, who were interested in making oral histories um, about Greater Manchester Music Heritage. Um, we invited the North West Sound Archive to come along and talk about uh, the, the sort of interview aspects of oral histories, so interview techniques and recording and the basic do's and don'ts. Because I, well, I've done interviews before when I got to the end and said, can you just sign this form? It was really nice for me just to have that time with people for Q and A's and things. So many people had shared so many ideas about what they wanted to cover. I thought ideally, you know, we'd be doing this every week, you know, it'd be fantastic. I've lived in Manchester most of my life, um, so I've been going to music events and consuming music in various forms for 30 years. I came um, to the Oral Histories training day um, and I came because I'm still obsessed by music. I, after we finished working with T-shirts and a long time later, I started to work for Deco Records, who were a, a Latin and world music and psychedelic specialist in Manchester. I saw it as also an opportunity to perhaps you know, learn, learn some new techniques and skills. I saw this for the training and I thought, you know, I really want to do that before my memory fails completely. Just meeting people with similar interests um, who, uh, I, you know, some of whom I hopefully will stay in touch with as well. Also friends of mine who, as we're getting older, we're not getting so, um, so good at remembering. Mm. <laughs> so friends of mine who used to work with me at the same time, I know musicians around now who have come up in later years. And it's just, I, I want, I feel that getting that information recorded is incredibly important. 
Today I didn't, I just thought I'd bring a few diaries. I don't diarise everything, but um, I've got 1975 here and uh, 1986. So I'm um, just looking at the type of bands I saw in 75, which uh, in one week, I think I saw Led Zeppelin, Leo Sayer, Thin Lizzy and Todd Rundgren. And then on the Saturday I was a bit depressed. So um, there's those kind of things that I forget about, you know, and in here I wrote that Blondie were rubbish when they supported television in 77, but now I don't believe that. I thought the B-52s at the factory were rubbish, but now surely I can't believe that. And uh, in 86 we've got 138 bands, I saw that year. So, um, to be talking about the Red Wedge and the Liverpool Council Benefit, which was in Liverpool, but it was New Order to start off with, then The Fall, then John Cooper Clark, then The Smiths. So, not a bad night. Dirty old town. Dirty old town. Dirty old town.